And just so you know who is sitting up here tonight, let's start with position one and please introduce yourself. Thank you, Chairman John Squire. Good evening, my name is Matari Gunter. Thank you, Chairman. Hello, my name is Justin Viegas. And I'm Tom, Tom Aiken. Thank you very much. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Adjustment for the City of Castle Hills will meet on the 22nd day of June 2020 at 5.30 p.m. at City Hall at Castle Hills, 2009 Lemonwood Drive, Castle Hills, Texas. To consider the following agenda, we are called to order and there is a quorum present. Thank you. Discussion and possible action on an application from Bill J. Cobb for the variance of a fence wall located at the required front yard of a property located at 6514 West Avenue, uh, City Block 5778A Block 14, Lot 19 contrary to Section 50-66 Fences A, fences in the required front yard may not be higher than three feet of the City of Castle Hills Codes of Ordinance. We're going to open the public hearing now. Is um, Mr. Cobb, are you going to do the presentation on your behalf or is there someone else? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Judah Doliner. I am the contractor that built the wall for Mr. Cobb. I got a call from Mr. Cobb and to come to his house and he explained me his situation. I told him before we can do anything, we have to get a permit from the city. We took out the plans, we went to the city, a few days later, we got the permit to build a wall six foot along West Avenue. Uh, what I saw there, and the guy, Mr. Cobb himself, called me, I'm over 90 years old. This is a, my last money that I got, and I need to build a wall. I cannot sleep here no more. They raised the, the street. I told him, look, I'm not the guy to tell you what to build here. The city can tell you yes or no and they give us the permit, we build the wall. If you go there and you see the area, he's not coming in from West Avenue. Everything got moved out to the side street. I don't remember the street name. But when he got the permit, I approached him and he was make, I asked me 10 times, is the city know about that? I told him here, you can read it. And he brought his daughter to verify that even. I told him, I don't want your money. I told him, I'm giving you my life saving. I don't know how long I'll be here, but I want to be quiet and sleep quiet. There is West Avenue, and now the cars are driving in my bedroom. I'm living here for over 50 years, and look what they do to me. This was, he came to me. I feel to him from this moment like he's my dad, you know, the way that he talked to me. And the, the person really very proud on the city and he make sure that we take the permit. And I don't think, with, today the wall is about four foot high because West Avenue is higher. But even that, if you go across the street, I saw walls of eight foot. But again, I cannot judge it. You are the guys, you are the board. And I think you have to forgive him and leave him like that because anything, everything got moved to the side street. The driver is the side street. The mailbox is in the side street. Everything, you know. I don't know why the city have to, after it give the permit to a guy that living here over 50 years to try to make him all this trouble in this age. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Ziga? Hello, board. Good evening. Thank you for having me here today or letting me speak. Um, I own the property directly to the south of the subject property. Um, I own 65, my family owns 6508 West Avenue. Um, the reason I'm here speaking um, on behalf of the property is because we were actually 
we came in front of this board last year trying to seek a variance for a uh, to build a smaller home than what's required by the rules. Unfortunately, that was declined, and part of the reasoning for the declination at that point in time was this wall. Um, this wall was mentioned as a um, safety hazard um, and made was even considered a reason to make my property undevelopable. So. With that being said, I, I just ask that, that the rules be applied fairly to everyone. If we're going through a lot of engineering with the currently working with the city engineer on figuring out a lot of the drainage concerns with our property, um, as has been advised by multiple committees, we're working through that. Um, I do ask that the rules be fairly applied to everyone. I understand it's not my intent to pick a fight with Mr. Cobb. I understand he's an elderly man and I fully respect him, but you know, I'd be okay if the wall was three foot and it would be less of a hindrance um, coming in and out of, our, of my property where I'm planning to build a home. Um, that is, that's my thoughts in summary. So I do ask you to please consider your decision uh, when reviewing this case. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else that maybe didn't sign up but wishes to speak on this matter in the public hearing? Suzette, do you want to talk? Thank you. Um, all due respect, um, the property that uh, the neighbor is talking about building a house on, it was really not the wall that was the um, the concern at the time. It was, it was, it was the oh, it was the uh, the flooding part because half of his property is the drainage ditch. The other problem was the proximity of the house to West Avenue. Um, my father has owned the property um, at 6514 for over 50 years. So the house was there long before West Avenue was raised and widened. Um, the property that um, Mr. I've forgotten his last name. Um, yeah, um, the, the lot is much small, the lot's much smaller, and it would put the house extremely close to West Avenue. And then there's a flooding problem. So that's really why it wasn't so much the wall. That's just my thought on it. And um, also the front door to the house now faces, or my dad's house, now faces Cremaria. It has for quite some years. The original front door faced West Avenue, but now we have a front door that faces Cremaria and has, has so for many years. So I guess we could always change the address to Cremaria. I think that my dad was just used to having the West Avenue address for so many years. So, thank know. you for your comments. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? It, we, we, let's not start rebuttaling. I mean, you, thank you very much. Okay, come on. By the way, you've got to remember there's been members of this board that sat through all these presentations, so True. we're very aware of. So my point of clarification is, is that, yes, uh, uh, Ms. Cobb is correct. There were other concerns, um, but one of the concerns that was clearly mentioned was the wall as a safety concern. So we're just trying to, as we work through all these issues, we, you know, we don't want other issues that are not, in, that we don't have control over. Right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, what I would like to do with the board, if it's all right, I'm gonna close the public discussion since there's no one else for the public. And then I would like to have someone make a motion, please, regarding this uh, variance request in a second. And if there is, then we'll open it up for our questions and discussions. There needs to be a motion put before the board to discuss it. If there is no motion, the variance would die. So um, is there a motion from the board? I'll, I'll ask again, is there a motion from the board? I'd make a motion that we discuss the issue. Uh, you, you would like to make a motion to accept or reject? And then we'll discuss that. Acceptance is actually the, the proper form. Okay. You want to make a motion to accept the variance request? Yes. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. 
Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Now we can discuss it. Thank you. Um, oh, okay, great. I wasn't even going there. Okay, um, Mr. Squire. Thank you, Chairman. Do we have a, do we know, as there's apparently, I think there's three walls uh, on this property of driving, driving by the property. I am not sure which wall we were even talking about, because there's one on the Cremaria side, one on the West Avenue side, and I think then one on the south side of the, of the property, if I, if I recall correctly. As it sits, um, and, and I read the, it was supplied to you by Louis this afternoon, I think, which was different than your pack. There's um, a lot of information in that. And one, the reality is the fence as it sits in the current situation entirely is, is not in compliance. Uh, you've got six feet on the West Avenue side, which is legally at this time the front of the house. You've got a four foot wall, uh, which is the low section, which is on the corners which is supposed to be three feet. And if in fact the house, let's say for, if the house was turned and the, it was recognized that the front of the house would be the Cremaria side, you also have a section of six foot wall there. So the, th there's a couple of things I would like to point out because I, I heard from the contractor regarding permits, okay? And I dug through this quite thoroughly. And um, on our permits, it has specifically stated in writing, I hereby certify I've read and examined this document and know the same to be true and correct. All provisions of laws, ordinance, governing this type of work will be complied with whether specified herein or not, granting of a permit does not presume to give the authority to violate or cancel the provisions in any other state or local law regulating construction, the performance of construction. So I will say point blank, uh, it is my opinion that there was no, um, I am not going to, I've also studied the drawings that were submitted and the drawings were, were less than accurate um, of the way the house is placed and the positioning of the house. Whether you use the um, contractor's diagram, which had a big sweeping driveway on the Cremaria side, or the reality of the house being square, straightforward. So what I believe we're talking about here is is making a decision of whether to take the existing wall and cutting it down to three feet by not granting this, um, this variance or uh, granting it as is. Um, I have heard the, the adjoining, and I sat on this board on the adjoining applicants concern who was working the property next door. And during that time, it was discussed. If a driveway is put into that property and a house is built, that wall is going to be an issue. Now, having said that, in driving out of Cremaria, there is the argument, if you look to the left, the wall does block the incoming traffic on West Avenue. However, if you look right, the slope of the yard on the other side far surpasses blocking the view than the wall does on the left. Now, as a point of reference, and then please, I will be quiet. Um, this is not an enforcement board. This is a pellet board. This is where we look at applications and, and try to decide if it's in the best interest of the applicant as submitted and if this harms or does any critical damage to anyone that it might affect. So we are, as I said, we are not here to enforce the law. We are here to hear, hear appeals that could give variances to our laws. 
just to, to straighten that out. Dr. Gunner. I guess my main concern is that if the existing wall, the option that we have is either cutting it down to three feet or granting it as is. Um, I guess based on those, those two options that I'm gathering here, looking at the documents, where this property falls between Cromeria and West Avenue, um, I would just, I would like to defer to you, Chairman, about perhaps um, cutting the existing wall down to three feet. What would, what would be the ramifications if that was what we, we recommended or as far as? Well, well, again, we would not recommend cutting the wall. We would just not approve the variance and that could be a solution for his compliance. Okay. Um, that that's our decision is, is whether we approve the variance as requested or not. Okay. Anything else, ma'am? No, no. Thank you, sir. My question is if we deny the variance, is he allowed to then change his address to Cremaria and then apply again for a variance for the four foot wall? not for the four foot wall, a three foot wall. A three foot wall is, is the law as it sits in Castle Hills at this time. Right, now, but he would be able to apply for a variance He would be able to right apply, now. That, that is correct. Okay, so we're not denying him any right if we deny this? Absolutely not. Okay, so he is allowed to then change his address and then apply again for a variance for Cremaria wall? For, for a variance? for the corner and the Cremarian's wall. If he changes his address, now this is something that uh, city would have to approve because again, the plat of where the house sits, it, it's, um, if it is determined that the front of the house is the Cremaria edge, then it is conceivable to interpret that anything behind that edge is considered the side or back of the house, which then would make that six foot wall on west, that portion in compliance. Now, again, you would still have the Cremaria modifications. It's my opinion, having looked at this, that that, that wall on Cremaria, which is now was built as a side wall when the house was this way, if the house is now this way, then that is no longer a side, that's a front wall, and that would have to be taken down to three feet along with the, the corner wall, which is four feet, which never was in compliance. Does that answer your question or was that confusing? <laughs> no, it does, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Are we allowed to ask questions? Sure, of okay. course. Uh, to the contractor, uh, what's the what's the cost of changing that six foot to three foot? You can't cut it down. So um, I, I think I saw you build it, and it looked like it came in portions. Is there you can't take a portion? Okay. Okay, and uh, to is it Mrs. Yeah, I, the the sketch is. I don't, I don't know about that. It, it looks a little off to me, but I I didn't grant the permit. I didn't see the permit, so I'm just looking at what I have here. Is uh. I'm sorry, is it Mr. Cobb's daughter? Yes. Suzette, hi. Um, what is the cost of changing the address to Cremaria? Um, I'm not sure, but it would probably be the least expensive route to go, and we've discussed it. And 
you know, dad's been there forever and he was just having a hard time with it. But we think that that is actually the way we would like to go. But, you know, I have, a, a, I just got informed because we have our code compliance person just came with a thing. He is saying that the change of address is not going to affect the house placement and that's the issue. I thought the issue actually was the placement of the front door. That was and and well, it, well, it might be, and you're not moving the front door. No, the front door faces Primaria. Really? The front door faces Primaria. Okay. I, I thought it was a slant front. There's, uh, we have, uh, the original front door to the house is, is, there and there was a built-on mudroom with, a, with another front door. That front door faces Primaria. Okay. I, I, I think tonight we need to be real careful on, on um, deciding where the address is and where the front door is because that that's in a whole different bailiwick. I, I think we need to go back to our original charge of but please, any more questions, sir? Pardon me? Yeah, Louis, could you answer that question, please, since you're here? Thank you. Louis, it has to do with the legal address. And the front door of the house. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Okay, the question is, there's been a discussion of the which front door and if the front door, is, which is now the side mudroom door, which is on Cremaria, if that becomes the front door and they use a Cremaria dress, will that become the front of the house? The propensity of the front plane of the structure determines what the front of the house is. Sir. Sure. The propensity of the front plane created by the front of the house uh, determines what the front yard is. So if in this particular case, if you have a diagonal house and perhaps it has a little protrusion that squares up at a 45 degree angle something like that toward Cremaria the propensity of the front of the house is diagonal so you would draw the building inspector during their inspection would draw that line across the propensity of the structure to determine where the front is and that's exactly what the building inspector did when he went for a final inspection Thank you. So, wait, is there any question from anybody? On, I have a question. Go ahead, please. Sir. Just to make sure, when you use the term propensity. So preponderance, I'm sorry. That was the wrong word, preponderance, not propensity. So the preponderance of length and width of the, of the structure, you're, or is that what you're referring to? The plane. Just okay. the, the single dimension plane, the, the, the line that okay. it creates. Okay, so you have, you have a vertical plane, vertical plane on the sides, if you want to look at it in that, in that perspective. Correct. My question is, is so, so the largest, well, planes doesn't have a dimension, but the longest dimension, if you want to say that, that determines your front and that determines your side or in that case, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So the, the, does, is that absolute or is there the option of, of self-determination saying this is the front of my, of my, of my house? Kind of like, a, and the reason I say this is the shotgun homes, you know, very long, Sure. But the doors on the end, that's the front of the home. Yes, sir. So I'm trying to understand what that, how that makes the determination. Well, we have an analogous case right now going through determination uh, with the building inspector having to do with that exact question. Mm -hmm. And it is almost an exact type residence only. It's not situated diagonal on the lot. It's, it's situated squared up. But there's a question of does the front peak of a wing create the front of the house? or does the entire front wall of where most of the house is create the front of the house? So that kind of answers your question that the, the, the largest amount of Mr. Cobb's house creates a diagonal. So most of, that, that's correct, sir. And if you draw that diagonal line like the building inspector did, then the six foot portion of that fence is from my kind of Kentucky windage entirely in the front of the house as designated by that plane. 
That, yes, sir, that's on the West Avenue side. The front of the house is diagonal from Cremaria to West Avenue. That's, that's correct. The side, yeah, there would be some on that property, there would be some on the Cremaria, a little bit. And, and there would be a negligible amount on the west side, as, as I have seen the house. It, the over, I mean, I can't quantify it, but the overwhelming amount of the six foot section is in the front of the house. Yes, sir. That's what the building inspector found, and that's why he was failed at final inspection. Understood, no problem, sir. Thank you very much. Any other questions of Mr. Zamora? Thank you. So there's no way that the front could be on Cremaria? Is there any amount that could be on Cremaria to be considered the front? Legally or by the international code standard that the building inspector Whatever the used, city follows. The front of the, 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 the majority of the front of the house is a diagonal plane. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, there may be a little bit that's squared off to Cremaria, but that's not the front of the house. That's a side of a garage, I guess. It's the best way to describe it. Okay, so in your opinion, if the resident applied to change the front of the house to Cremaria, would there be enough there to grant that, to consider it the front? I can't answer that question. I can only tell you that the building inspector sees that front wall of the house, the majority of that front wall of the house as the front of the house. And that's where they are going to draw the line and everything, in this case, this way, if you will, is front. Everything this way is side till you get to the back plane of the house, then that's backyard. Okay, thank you. Mr. Aiken. So I got a couple things. Uh, I know we're having some good conversation on front yards and backyards and side yards. With respect to this property, it doesn't really get me too excited uh, about what the front yard is legally, where the diagonal is, and so forth and so on. And I go back, and I live on Sunflower at Lock Hill Silva. Back in the day, West Avenue was Lock Hill Silva, right? I mean, those of us who have lived here for 20 or 30 years or 40 years or whatever, Lock Hill Silva was what West Avenue was. West Avenue isn't Lock Hill Silva anymore. West Avenue has been redone about three different times while I've lived here. It's changed from being Lock Hill Summit to now being West Avenue. It's continuing to change because down by the school, now they put in the middle barriers, whatever they call them. It's gotten to be bigger. So I'm inclined to say, I don't care what the front of the house was. I don't care what the front of the house is now. I'm more interested in, does this property owner you, should he be allowed to have the wall on West Avenue where it is? I don't care if the front of the house is in the back of the house. And I lived in a house on Sunflower at one point in time that was facing backwards, and you know the house. Uh, so I think we need to look at what is West Avenue now compared to what it was 50 years ago and how it's changed and how the traffic volume has changed and what this gentleman is probably going through with the traffic. Uh, and the noise and so forth. So, uh, you know, from that standpoint, you know, and I, I appreciate the discussion we're having, but we're, what we're trying to do here is say, well, is there something that gives us justification to say the front yard is now Cremaria? And then all of a sudden we say, great, let's grab him and, and uh, let's just say he's okay. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Does it, to me, that we're just trying to figure out a way to get him into the box we want to put him into. I'm looking at it from the standpoint that I know West Avenue has changed over the last 50 years at least since 1985, because that's when I moved here. Uh, and it's a totally different street. And there's a lot of different businesses on it now. It's been completely redeveloped and it carries a lot more traffic. It carries a lot of bus traffic and so forth. So I think we're trying to, 
put him into a box that I don't care what the front and the back is. I, I really don't. Uh, I can tell you, I, I'm not familiar with this particular house, but I do drive up and down West Avenue a good bit, not every day, probably every week. And this house and the wall has never caught my attention, not one time. So as a homeowner in Castle Hills, if it's never caught my attention, it must be because it's not very bad. If it was very bad, I think it would have caught my, if, I, if it stood out, it would have caught my attention. It's never caught my attention. So, I don't think I have any questions for anybody. I'm just making some comments. No, that, so, those are my comments is that I've driven the street. It's never caught my attention. I don't care about the front, the back, and the side. I really don't. I mean, I know what our code is. So, I do from that perspective, but I'm not trying to rearrange the house. I'm not trying to, I don't think it's our, I don't think we should try to do our job by, by, by rearranging the house, changing the mailbox. I mean, he's had the same address on West Avenue. Let him have it. I can also say this without knowing, but 50 years ago, I guarantee you, he drove into his the front yard on West Avenue, and now he drives it on Cremaria, right? I don't know that answer, sir. I had the possibility to, okay. but regardless, so th those are the comments that I've got. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I don't, no, I, no, no. I don't have any questions. I Excellent comments. comments, and that you're, I think you're spot on. Okay. That's, that's all I've got. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? <laughs> There was a comment that was made that the original permit was approved. I'm trying to find the, is that, is that a, was that a valid? Uh, it's right here. It's there. It should be in that packet right there. It is valid. The original permit, however, it was not built to spec. That that's the problem. Now, okay. now it's my turn to make some comments. I mean, actual comments, Mr. Cobb. I, I think your wall is, is, um, is very appropriate for what you need to accomplish, what you want to accomplish. Um, if you, if that house were to be torn down and a new house was built with a Cremaria frontage, that would become a side yard and there would be an eight foot fence as there are in the subdivisions and other places. Um, I'm gonna go out on a little limb here because I am not, um, I'm not throwing rocks, so to speak but the compliance with this ordinance is a contractor's job, period, the end. Uh, that is why you hire a contractor. That is why you have the contractor come in and pull permits. That is why you have the contractor to go through things. We've run into this before. Um, I in no way want to penalize Mr. Cobb for the failure of someone to cross the T's and dot the I's and draw the diagrams that could be complied with so they would pass the inspection. Now, I also have heard Mr. Ziga's comments, and, and yes, sir, I was sitting here on this board when, the, and that was a very valid concern, was the eyesight if a driveway goes in there seeing down. Um, and there were other compliance issues, as, as you know. I, th I think with the eccentricity right now, as if, again, Mr. Cobb's house was being torn down and there was going to be a new house built on the same exact lot with an eight-foot fence being in total compliance going on the side, you would still have the same issues, Mr. Zika. Also, if you come out of Mr. Cobb's driveway or anyone else coming out on Cremaria, if you look to the right, it is totally obstructed by the dirt of the yard of, of the next house on the other side. His wall doesn't really, from the Cremaria side, block anything. And I would believe that you're gonna find on Mr. Ziga's property coming out of his driveway, unless it is built up incredibly, you're gonna have that same elevation problem on both sides. That's, that's for a different, so my thought is, I, I don't like it. Um, I, I think, um, but as I said, I do not see pain or suffering from any other, to any other resident in Castle Hills. Um, I, I think it's, um, the era was done by who I pointed out, I feel the contractor. 
I, I don't like the time frames it's taken to come here. Actually, before this wall was even considered, it should have come before this board and cross the T's and dot the I's. I, I am concerned about the time frame that it took from when the wall was built to where we sit today and all the interim steps that have gone on in between. However, um, I intend to vote for the approval of, of this variance. That, that's just my personal position. On a, yes, sir. So you were on the, on the board regarding Mr. Ziga's property. Is the fence an issue no matter the height? If it's three feet, two feet, is it always gonna be an issue? I think, I think the fence would be an issue at three feet because of the elevation of the, of the adjoining property. And is that your understanding as well? No. What is, what is your understanding? And again, we're not. Please, like, just, just yeah. as to this fence. And how much, does it, in the entire fence, or is it just a portion? Because I so, understand that the fence cuts in. Chairman, my at caution some point. we need to stay on the Yeah, we, we need to, yeah. This, this is the only question. We're, we're really pushing the, the line. You on said it doesn't line. affect any other owner and well, you keep, he's affected it by affect it. me as an owner. You keep bringing, you keep bringing up that it doesn't affect any pain or suffering. It, it uh, I think the correct. exact words I used was the, an existing home owner. You're right. I'm not a and resident, but I am. No, a but uh, again, and also there's not an existing home on your property right now. It's yes, being but I, am a, I am a property owner. And as a point of order, I'd like to remind this board that they're tasked to look at the facts and circumstances of today, where right now I hear a lot of speculation. If words like if, Words like, but, words like, if this happened, but if this happened, if we look at the facts and circumstances of today. Mr. Ziga. Sorry. Can we fence, just talk? Back I to mean, the fence. I think I'm allowed enough to come up here. Thank you for letting so. me come up here, Mr. Villegas. Um, back to the fence. My understanding is the fence is a visual obstruction at its current height. If it went down to three feet in a vehicle, you'd be able to see over three feet. Um, the chairman is correct. There is a, an elevation grade. Unfortunately, because of the drainage implications in our property, we don't, uh, raising the elevation of the property as a whole isn't really an option because that would create an adverse impact for all of our neighbors in the neighborhood upstream. So what we're, I know it's a little off topic, but it is relevant, I assure you, that what we're looking at with the city engineers is to actually raise the home on piers so that the water level can rise and fall as needed. That doesn't affect, so the grade, the idea with the grade is to leave it as is. So as we're driving out, a shorter fence that would be the legal height, three foot, would definitely, I feel, would be a lot easier to see and safer. Uh, That's to, not a, you don't know for a fact though. Um, you just, based on the grading studies that we've been looking at for the past year, three feet makes a world of a difference when you're in a vehicle, right? Does it make a compliance though? Does it what? I'm is sorry. it in compliance if it's three feet to you? Do you I, I just want to know if this is an issue or not, if it's three feet or not. For us, it's an issue because- if Right, it, but if, if it, you, you feel if it's at three feet, if it were at three it would make a difference. If but, it were at three feet, it would absolutely make a difference to the visibility when driving out of our property. But would it be approved if it was at three feet? Would it be, do you still have the visual issue um, as to your understanding from what the board has told you before? That is their interpretation. I don't think there would be a visual obstruction with a fence at three foot. I okay. drive a truck. I think I'd be able to see over a three foot fence in the okay. truck. All right, thank you. thank you. Thank you. We're getting off. We need to get Ch back Chairman, on. Chairman, may I ask a, a question regarding sure. to, uh, the ingress and egress off of Primaria? Um, you already pointed out about the, the level of the yard um, on the north side of Primaria and West Avenue. The, the, on the south side of Primaria where you would turn onto, uh, onto West Avenue, um, does this fence, I know there's certain restrictions you have to have, certain setbacks you have to have from, uh, to, main, to maintain that visual, you know, so you can get on the street. Does that fence, is that fence in compliance? Side yard, front yard, with that not, with that not being a factor in that question? Louis, does that I need fence to know, I need comply? To know if, you're, if you're turning, like we have in our streets, you have to maintain your vegetation down to a certain level and all that, or, or, or that far back from the corner. There's, certain, there's a certain formula. I just see no. Is, is that is that far enough back to where it's in compliance in that regard? The answer to the question is two part. First of all, the first code that you refer to with the vegetation is that which grows over 18 inches in a triangle 
uh, that's uh, determined by 30 inches on one axis, 30 inches on the other, and then, then connecting the two. So at that particular standard, this wall does not fit into that. Secondly, and, and this is kind of Kentucky windage again, uh, that wall does not intrude into any easement that we're aware of. It is onto their private property and not intruding onto a setback or an easement. Thank you for that clarification. Can, can I just add, Chairman, real quick from the standpoint, and you mentioned time frame, you know, from staff standpoint, you know, and Mr. Zamorone doing the due diligence when this was first brought by our building inspector in the sense that he said that it did not fall, which is in the copy here, that it did not fall into the plans that were specified. So the recourse obviously was Mr. Zamorone going out and letting them know it did make it to court and court had recommended going to the BOA. So you want, that's what I want to give you a time frame from that standpoint. So there's been some steps involved before getting here to BOA today. Just want to clarify that. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. Go ahead. Is there a, is there, let me call for a vote, please, unless there's an objection. All in favor of granting the variance as written, signify by saying aye. 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 It is granted um, by unanimous vote. Thank you very much. The next item is item number two. I can find item number two, three. Discussion and possible action on an application by John Gatz for a variance for a 120 foot monopole cellular telephone tower, 10 foot lighting rod to be located at 211 Roletta Drive, CB 507D block lot 27.39 AC, contrary to section 50 Three height regulation, no building shall have more than two stories or exceed 35 feet in height. Opening a public hearing, is there anyone to speak on this issue? Yes, ma'am. Hello, uh, my name is Maria Soto and my residence is at 118 South Garden View, which is at the corner of Garden View and Roleto. And I'm located right across from the church the Covenant Church. Yes, ma'am. So um, my concern is about, uh, they said that all those uh, uh, stations and everything, uh, they cause cancer. So, you know, for the health safety, uh, that's why I'm here, because I'm concerned about that. Thank you very much. Yes. And it's going to be like right, really close, right? Where is it going to be located exactly where the sign is and the flag or no ma'am it's going to be in the back corner on the school side uh behind the church and was the school notified about it the, the school so was kids. notified about it yes ma'am yeah because that's a concern also about right. the kids you know okay well that's all I thank you very so much thank you Ladies and gentlemen on the board, I, I do have a recommendation and a thought, um, and you can act on it as you choose. Can we close the public hearing? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. The public hearing is now closed. Um, this was scheduled to go to zoning before it came to us, so zoning could, could issue or not issue a, a special use permit for the use of this tower. There's also different design elements that need to be discussed. Um, it is it because of the zoning issues last month and their meetings it has gone out of sequence I would like to possibly not entertain this this evening um, just without a motion to act and uh, let it go back into the sequence and go before zoning next month and then if approved come to us for the variance on the height because we're making a decision on the height variance where there hasn't even been an SUP issued for the underlying matter. That's, that's my thought. 
Do I hear a motion um, to approve this as written? Chair, may I may I have a question to the city manager first? Sure. Um, Mr. Rapley, since uh, our chairman brought up that this has fallen out of order, um, if this is not approved by or, or not approved by zoning, would it even make it to us? Um, sir, I, I am not sure on that. I just know that um, I believe we talked about the, needing that SUP and council approval before we get the variance. Um, right now, what I was going to say was the applicant. So, so Ryan, you're, you're, so we need we will need an SUP on this, correct? Yes. Yeah, so, again, I, the applicant is not here. He was supposed to attend by Zoom. Okay. Um, this item for the SUP was on the June 5th zoning meeting. We didn't have a quorum. Would have gone to city council and then BOA today. Okay. Um, okay. So it's now going to go to the July 7th zoning city council and then back to BOA. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification. I'll, I'll second the chairman's motion. I, I didn't make a motion, but <laughs> if there's, if there's no motion to accept, do I hear a motion to accept? Do I? You, you, you can make the motion, correct? I can make one, but if I don't make a motion, you don't make a motion, it'll just die. <laughs> Just, just to clarify, Mr. Squire, in, in the back of the packet, there was a letter from our city engineer that said this is kind of a two-step process, SUP, um, SUP approved by council, essentially, and then a BOA. Um, there's not a certain order here that he's reflected that needs to happen, um, but it obviously takes two to make sure this is done. So. In regard to the motions, if there is no motion made and it dies, then it doesn't kick in into in any of the time frames of rejection. Can you repeat that please? If if there is no action at all, it does not disqualify it for coming back. Where if we reject it, there is possibly the time frame of it having to wait six months to Whether come back. Whether the motion is made or not, and if if we want to if, if it's the proper thing to wait till after zoning hears it. Then we let it die tonight. Come back to us. Yeah, we just don't make a motion at all. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So I must ask, is there a motion? I need to ask twice. Is there a motion? Being that there's no motion, this item is dismissed. Is there anything else that the board needs to talk about tonight? Wants to bring up? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for being here. And thanks very much. Good night. This meeting is adjourned.